Hello, and welcome to the next video. I believe this is number four. I might be off by one, but uh, the next video of uh, the series that I'm doing on calibrating and setting up your ER20 printer. Um, again, I'm not, uh, none of these videos right now is targeted or planned to be about like assembly or uh, just the, con the, the standard things that are in the instructions because so many people already, even though this is a relatively new printer on the market, um, have, for example, showed us how to level our beds. Since this is an auto bed leveling machine, it's, it's fairly easy. Uh, if you want me to do a video on that and also how to set Z offset, I, I'm happy to do that. I've already done that with this machine, so it's printing really well. And in fact, before we get into the subject of this video, I just wanted to show you again uh, some of the uh, test prints uh, that have been just beautiful. I mean, the, the of course, the matte blue PLA uh, that we have going on here is gorgeous anyway, but um, if anything, what I'm noticing, I mean, the dimensional accuracy of our first cube was just spot on. I mean, I think the y-axis might have been 0.1 millimeter different than the other two. Just a really, really uh, uh, accurate uh, print. Uh, so the XYZ cube came out really nicely. Um, and the little, uh, their test number two, which is a little vase, uh, also looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, just a beautiful, uh, beautiful print. Um, almost mesmerizing. It almost looks sil uh, like it's got silk or metallic in it, even though it doesn't. So, uh, the spiralized outer contour, the vase mode of Cura, I'm sorry, the vase mode for uh, the slicer, uh, whatever they use to generate the G-code, really came out super nice. This is just a gorgeous, a gorgeous print. Um, so, with these uh, kind of uh, shown to you as eye candy, I guess, uh, the subject of this video is going to be a quick uh, quick tutorial on how to set uh, your e-steps or calibrate your e-steps. So there's plenty of resources online for calibrating e-steps. But I just wanted to show you just kind of like a, a pretty, you know, a lay, a lay person's way of doing it very easily um, and at least getting within the ballpark. You should do this a couple of times over the, you know, as you go through the first few months of your printer just to, to, to let things settle in and make sure things are working right. This is the initial time I'll do this on this particular printer. Um, and I've already got some things already set up, ready to go. So I, I, let's talk through those and then we'll actually do it um, so that you can see how it's done. So the first thing that I've done uh, is uh, um, actually not very, uh, is just, let me see if I can get it to, uh, to show up. I'll use a, I'll use a, uh, if you can see on my filament here, I've made two marks. There's a 100 millimeter mark right there, and there's a 120 millimeter mark. What do I mean by 100 and 120? That's the distance on the filament from exactly where it goes into the Bowden tube. So I use that as a reference point, measured up 100 millimeters to paint my first mark, and then 120 millimeters to make my second mark. Okay, um, so we've got that set up. Um, and then I've heated up my extruder, uh, the hot end, to 230. That's pretty high uh, for PLA. Um, the reason it's there, though, at that, at, and I recommend you do this uh, by setting it that high when you're going to do your e-steps, is because you don't want to have any, like, uh, back pressure or some issues with the extruder gear pushing against pressure in the Bowden tube, and you might get an incorrect result. So make it flow nice and easily. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to type in a couple of commands here uh, on the uh, on the terminal program. So what do I mean by terminal program? Over here on the computer is a program open called Pronterface. It's free. You can download it. This is not going to be a Pronterface tutorial. Um, I'll let you do that on your own. There's plenty of uh, resources out there. But basically, I've just got Pronterface up connected through the USB uh, to the printer, and then hit connect up here in the top left. I had to select the appropriate baud rate, which was 115.2, or, or 115,200, but yeah, 115.2. And, and then it said over here that I was connected, and now I've, I can actually talk to my printer directly um, through using G-code. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna enter some commands uh, and ask it to extrude 100 millimeters of filament, and then we're going to see what we actually get uh, when we extrude it. So uh, one of the first things I typed in, um, and I can down below in the comments, I will have a link for teaching tech 
Uh, he's a massively subscribed to YouTuber who does 3D uh, printing teaching. Um, I'm going to link to his page on E-Step Calibration because it'll show you, you know, even better than I'm telling you now what, what's going on at this particular point in time, as well as give you these commands to, to enter into your terminal program and then calculate uh, what you need to enter for your E-Steps. Um, but uh, anyway, one of the commands that, uh, that you'll find there is the M503 command. And I typed in M503 right up here, and all this information came up. It's telling me what's going on inside the firmware of my ER20. And what I'm interested in is the M92 line uh, for E-Steps calibration. The M92 line sits right here, and you're pro guaranteed you're probably going to have a hard time seeing it. Let me see if I can get closer. So the M92 line, there it is, uh, towards the top. The very last value, the E value, says 100. So that's my current E steps is 100, which is kind of a default uh, set. And we're going to see what happens when we type in these commands and then go from there. So uh, bear with me just a second as I set the tripod here so you can kind of watch me do this. And we'll, we'll go from there. So what I'm going to type in um, at the bottom here is, first of all, I'm going to type in uh, G91, which is going to put it in absolute positioning, right? So I sent, I just set G91 in my little thing here. It said sending G91. That's all you're going to get on this, this screen. It, it was sent, and that's great. And then now I'm going to give it a command. I'm going to say G1. It's a movement command. E100, I'm going to tell it to do 100 millimeters of filament, and I'm going to go F50, which means it's going to extrude pretty slowly. I want it as accurately as possible. So I'm going to hit enter, and then I'll bring you over here, and you can see now the extruder gear is actually turning. And we are extruding filament. I really don't care about the filament coming out down here other than the fact that it is coming out and that you know there isn't any blockage or something happening. It's just going to string out there. What we're looking for is we've told this extruder to extrude 100 millimeters of filament, which means we've asked the gear to extrude a particular length. What we're going to be doing is measuring the actual length that was extruded so that we can enter in engineering speak, we're going to enter a delta into the firmware, into the EEPROM, so that we can correct for any mistakes or, or we can correct for the error in the extruder's gearing. So it's still going. Noticing that uh, we had to go really slow. It looks like it's kind of stopping now. Maybe not. Nope. Still, uh, still turning. Cool. That is now done extruding. Of course, we've got a bunch of junk down here um, that we can pull off and do whatever with. But um, all right. So now the next step is to actually look at our. And I'm going to set it over here. You'll have to just watch me do it from a little bit from afar because it'll be easier for me to be able to, to measure it. Um, I'm going to look at our markings here, and it looks like it, could, it extruded wow, almost precisely a hundred. Let me look. Uh, let me let me let me do uh, some measurements here. Hold on, just a second. So this is very rare um, that uh, I will tell you that most of your printers are not going to come out to be that precise, but it extruded or the extruded gear actually uh, extruded exactly 
or at least it traveled. Who knows how much it actually extruded from the of the plastic, but traveled an exact 100 millimeters. There is no change I need to make to my E-steps. This has never happened to me before, so that's really kind of interesting. But um, one of the things I wanted to tell about or, or show you in this video is that um, uh, is how to like change it. So um, one of the things that I'll go ahead and type in, even though it won't change anything, the way you would change your E-steps is you would type in M92 which again, it's the M92 line. Let me see if I still have it up here. No, I don't. So we'll get it here just in a second. Um, so I'm gonna type in at the bottom M92 space E100. That's, that's E for your extruder steps 100. And then I'm gonna hit enter. It says sending M92. Then I'm gonna say M500. Why do am I saying M500? Because that saves it to my EEPROM. And now I'm gonna type M503. So now it's gonna give me all this data and I can look at the very top. At M92, it says, it's showing me my X, Y, and Z offsets or, or uh, offsets or steps. And then E is 100.00, which is what I'm gonna leave it at because it was perfect. If it had not been perfect, there's an easy formula for determining uh, what you want uh, there. I'll show it to you on a little sticky here, but I would strongly recommend you just Google extruder steps calculator. There are probably, oh, I don't know, a hundred sites, but anyway, the first four or five that'll come up will have a page where you can just plug in your values, uh, what you, what you, you know, what you asked for, what you expected to get, for example, what you did get and what your actual uh, uh, current values are, and it'll spit out what you need to put. But here's the formula, pretty simple. Um, disregard the ER20. Basically, you asked for 100, so it's gonna be 100 over X, which is what you actually got. So, you know, if I, I got 100, um, and then you're gonna multiply that by your current E-steps, whatever the currently it, it is showing on your M92 line. For me, it's, you know, 100 over 100 times 100, which was one times 100, which is 100. So I put 100 in there, right? Kind of easy to do. But let's say, you know, you were expecting your current E-steps were 100, but what you got was, uh, um, you know, uh, something different. You would get a different value. Um, like, so 100 over 90, for example, would give you a different value that you would then multiply by 100, in my case, and that would give you new E-steps. Um, if you only got 90, you're going to need to actually have, that's going to be a 1.12 you know, or something like that times 100 is going to give you E-steps of about 112. Then you would enter in, remember when we did the M92, you'd say M92 E112, enter. M500, enter. And then now you would be able to see when you did another M503 command that your M92 line would now show 112. I did not have to change but it's very easy to change. Just follow the, all right, to calculate what you need to change. So just follow the links below in the description. That's all for this video on how to calculate your E-steps. Now we're gonna work on calculating your flow.